Sing it. New, 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 new. Where's my cable? New, new, new. We'll uh, we'll edit this in post. All right. Okay. First up. Okay, so we have a revision, but it's a revision that I want to talk about because it's a big deal revision. So the INA 219, uh, which we revised to add SemiQT connectors, people love this. It's a high or low side uh, current sensor. Uh, it goes over I squared C. It's one of our oldest products. I think it's like product number seven, uh, 904, so it's quite old. Um, but here's the thing. So, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, click here. So. Yeah, so we revised it and it looks a little different and I want to explain what changed. So we could not get the INA219B, which is the version of the SOT23 chip that we've been using for a really long time. So instead, what we did is we revised the board to use an SOIC uh, sized chip. So the chip is bigger and it's the INA219A, not the 21, it may be the 219A, not just the 219B. The difference is the 219B, I think, is 0.5% precision, and the 219A is 1% precision. Thing is, is that resistor is only like 1% precise anyways, so it's not like it's gonna make a huge difference, but I do wanna mention that the precision has changed slightly. Um, we never promised that we'd have the 219B, we kinda just said it was the 219. Um, we just couldn't get the 219B chips anymore, it was just very difficult. We wanted to keep these in stock, and I think for most people's usage, uh, the 219A is just fine. Um, if this is absolutely killing you and you absolutely need the 219B, I think in the next few months, we might be able to revert back to using specifically uh, the B subtype. Um, but the next few months, basically, we could only get the A type. And I thought it'd be better to have it in stock, even if it's 0.2% less precise. Okay, next up. Okay, next up, uh, we have, you know, this is actually something um, handy for people who have a micro bit or you have... Uh, Circuit Playground Express or Circuit Playground or any other, um, you know, project where it has like alligator clippy pads. So we had Tower Pro, which makes the servos that we really like, uh, create a version of their micro servo, but this time it has alligator clips on it, yeah. which makes it really easy. Good for workshops. It's great for basically. Yeah, for this workshops. is gonna if you've ever had to do any in, like step by step instructional learning, especially with youngins you will appreciate this because you can get right to controlling a servo and not um, trying to figure out which way to plug it in. Yeah. Wrong stuff, wrong wires, wrong this, Okay, so let's go to the overhead and I'll show off this demo. Okay, so basically this is just a demo of moving back and forth. Um, but it's the same micro servo, geared plastic servo that you're used to. Uh, send it one to two millisecond pulses um, and you can power it from uh, ground and signal, and in this case, I'm powering it from V out, which happens to three V five volts. But you can also power it from uh, three point three volts. It won't move as fast or as strong, but I know the micro bit only has three volts available. Um, but basically, we have a servo to alligator clip adapter cable, which you can use with any servo. But if you just want to get started quickly with the micro servo, this is you know, very compact and easy to use, and the wires are color coded which took red. us quite a few tries to get the right color coding, but power is red, uh, signal is white, and ground is black. Yeah, this is gonna save a lot of people a lot of time. Okay. It's funny, I had the USB-C cable right here, it was plugged into one of my Yeah, so it always is. I what know. Are you, are you and also it takes like three times to plug in the cable too. So. Yeah, I got it all. Okay, uh, so we're uh, continuing on our path to have our um, seven segment backpacks all come pre-assembled. So people don't even have to solder in the um, LED segment displays. So these are STEMI QT capable seven segment backpacks. So they're plug and play and you don't even have to solder in uh, the LED segments. So let's go to the overhead because I'll show these off. Yeah. Do you um, want me to show both of them before we go to the overhead? Because we have Sure. They're, yeah. There's blue and white. We also already put in red yeah. and green. I think that was the last few weeks. Yeah. We had a bunch of so yeah, you we go to the page so you can get, select and get all the different colors. Correct. But here, here's the. Uh, also, one of our first, you know, check. products was yeah. the seven segment backpack. So it's great to be updating it. Okay, so uh, beef one two three four. So, so this is the two uh, blue and white. They're incredibly bright. 
um, matrix drivers and what's nice is of course you know now you don't have to solder anything at all you can just plug and play over I squared C you can have up to eight of them if you solder close these uh, jumpers over here um, but otherwise they're just uh, stackable you can put them next to each other they stack up side by side so you can have very long digits if you so wish um, and always stem IQT so we're trying to get everything to as little soldering as possible required to get started okay next up okay another update so the, oh, this is, there's many updates because of this chip shortage which are which is causing a little bit of a back and forthness in the market so oh, i was on this email thread oh yeah these came in cool these came in <laughs> it is okay. it is like that it's like oh these are finally i can get these to you great okay so this is the open mv m7 this is like a you know a smart machine learning camera that you can program with micro python it's very powerful it uses the stm32 h743 which if anybody knows is basically like total unobtainium but they were able to get some stock to to fabricate some the only deal is they couldn't fabricate the version 2 with the i think it's the mt9411 camera so this has i think the um ov56 something something camera it's it's basically version one for why we were selling version two but then chip shortage hit uh crushed all hopes and dreams of getting stm32 h7 so you know the one thing we were able to get is to go back to v1 if you absolutely need v2 you really want that you know that new mt9411 or whatever part number camera uh please wait you know maybe in six months we'll have some of the v2s but for most people's uses it doesn't really matter the camera quality is almost identical the chip is the same um the software functionality is the same so uh we have a couple hundred of these in stock honestly i don't know when and neither does open know when they're going to be able to make more of these um yeah if you're going to get one you so if you want one maybe a little bit you may not want to wait out until yeah. the v2 is available you might want to get the v1 and and it's basically the same anyone who's been um, waiting on sd chips is Living yeah, in the world of hurt. if you're in an STM32 F7 or H7 world, you're yeah, you're in a yeah. world of pain. Okay, and yeah. and no parts. Next up, and look at here's another STM based board. <laughs> what a coincidence! Uh, so actually, this is funny. This one they went to the GD32 F105, which is a Giga device um, ST compatible chip. So this is the black magic probe this is a really cool all-in-one uh debugger that has built-in debugging capabilities for um a variety of chips arm core chips it's swd programming um but what's really neat is it like it's kind of like built into the chip itself so you don't necessarily need to install open ocd uh it's very popular and uh we were out of stock for a very long time they had to do a bit of a redesign for chip shortage reasons uh, but thankfully, we were able to get some. They've also updated the firmware. It's now V2.3. Um, so we got a bunch of these, and I think they'll be able to keep these in stock. Uh, hopefully, Giga Device can supply them with uh, the chips. And, um, you know, basically, this is kind of an advanced programming debugger for folks who are using, uh, you know, if you're using STMs or SAMDs, um, anything with a Cortex M0, M3, M4 processor. Uh, this will do the job. Check out the open source code also on GitHub. Uh, you can see the changes and also make sure that your chip is supported. All right, next up. Okay, this is a very weird cable. So we can get a <laughs> lot of these. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> okay, so this is this is extra weird because we've actually stocked the um, we've stocked USB C PD cables already. And USB C. This, what's interesting? It looks. I thought this was like makeup on it, but it's actually a translucent cable. Yeah. Um, so these are very interesting cables in that you plug in the USB C side into a wall adapter that can supply USB power delivery, five, nine, twelve, fifteen, twenty volts. There's like power supplies that can supply different voltages based on what kind of cable device is plugged in. Yeah. So we stock the cables that when you plug it in, they will give you like a fixed nine volts out or a fixed 12 volts out. And it's very handy because you no longer have to have multiple wall warts. Like, you know how we have that box of wall warts in, at home? Yes. And like, we can't get rid of it because it's always like no, you need No, there's it. always like, I need that one. There's always a thing you need. Mm. So it, the idea is to replace those instead of having different wall warts with different voltages, mm. the cable defines or the device defines the voltage. So we had the fixed cables and if you want like a fixed voltage, like I always want nine volts or always want 12 volts, get that. Now, if you're freaky like me and you want a cable that can be reprogrammed to request different voltages, 
this is your thing. <laughs> so this cable, and this is so dangerous. It's like it's yeah. like sometimes we carry stuff, and I'm like, you're gonna hurt yourself. So try to like not hurt yourself. Yeah. But this cable comes with a little dongle. You see the dongle in the top right. You can program that. There's a some Windows software that comes with it, and you can reprogram the power delivery requester chip to request different voltages. So you can have it be five, seven, nine, 10, 12, 15, 18, and 20, I think. And um, you you program it with like these little kind of like, uh, you know, they're not EDIDs, but they kind of feel like EDIDs are little, little code chunks. And then the cable turns into that cable. So one day you can have it be a five volt requester cable. The next day it's 12 volt, the next day it's 20. You know, you can have it request the highest voltage up to you or the lowest voltage, whatever. There's like different programs that you can program it with. Basically, it's extremely dangerous because you don't know what you're gonna, you know, like if you thought that you programmed it for nine, but it's actually 12. This you, is a super fun cable. Yeah, you could get 12. If you're interested in experimenting with power delivery, though, I think it's, I think this, this does have some use cases, um, you know, especially if you're not sure what power delivery you want or you want to test a power supply with different voltages. So it's like kind of funky. I will say you do have to reprogram it between each settings. Like you can't, there's no button or anything to switch the setting. You have to reprogram it each time yeah. for the different settings, but it's one cable that can do them all. Um, you know, just try not to hurt yourself with this. Don't, don't forget what you set it to because you think it was set for five volts. It's actually set for 20. You plug it in and you, um, you blow up your electronics. Yeah. So super fun. Okay, and Star Show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our community, our customers, our staff, everyone who works with us, everyone who's supporting this adventure called Adafruit is? The PCF8575. Now you might be wondering, wow, why do you have a 16 IO expander? Don't you have the NCP 23017? Yeah, we do, but we're not getting chips till 2024. <laughs> so, or maybe, I mean, hopefully we'll get some Come sooner. Come on. But I wanted to have something out there for people who um, needed a 16-bit GPIO expander um, and did not want to wait for the MCP23017 expander to come back into stock. Um, this is very inexpensive. It's very easy to use. It's a bit of a funky chip. Um, we stock the F, F, sorry, PF, PCF8574. Uh, which is the 8-bit version um, and uh, that's been in the store for a bit and people have liked that. So the thing with that is, and this, is, is they actually use very similar code. There's technically no direction register for the pins on this. There's only two modes for each IO. It's either a light pull-up input or a strong syncing output. Um, basically what this means is that if you want to wire up an LED, this cannot source current it can only sync current so you have to connect the led from the power one of the power rail pins to the uh gpio and if you want to have a button connected uh you have to have the button connected to ground so it, you know when you press the button it shorts the ground um and that will use the light pull up on the input it's not as you know powerful and amazing as like something the mcp 23017 however it's available and it's very inexpensive <laughs> Um, and there's a lot of drivers out there. We wrote Arduino and CircuitPython slash Python code. Uh, there's three address pins, so you can have eight of these. Um, there is an interrupt output. There is an interrupt output pin. Um, all light pull-up inputs are automatically added to the IRQ. So it's a very simple chip, right? There's not a lot going on. There's like one I squared C register, but it does work quite well. Uh, so I thought I'd show this demo, which is using the USB-C cable that I finally found. Um, That's right. So I just have it, you know, one thing that I liked about this breakout is it had a little space. So I added a power rail, uh, ground and power, because again, uh, LEDs, you have to connect the anode to power and the cathode to LED. You can't do it the other, you can't connect it from the IO to ground. It will not be able to source current, it can only get sync current. And here's a button connected from one of the ground pins to an IO. And then I have a little Arduino sketch running on here. Uh, it reads the button when the button switches. When I press the button, it switches which LED is lit back and forth, back and forth, all over GPIO and then this fell out. Um, second, there you go. Um, very simple demo, but it's effective. I mean, one thing that is nice about this is because the I2C interface 
is so simple. It's very fast. Like you don't have to read a bunch of registers and, and do bit masks or whatever. There's literally, you, you either write the 16 bit output or you read the 16 bit input and that's it. Okay. And that is new products. Yay, new, 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 new. I found my cable, new, 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 new,